So Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Good morning. You may be seated. Make yourselves comfortable. Just a quick question as we begin this morning. Have you ever heard anybody say to you, or have you ever been in a, the position of asking someone, or rather not questioning, but heard the statement, you're acting just like your father, <laughs> or you're acting just like your mother? Yeah, I, I, would, I would assume many more people have heard that than have just currently acknowledged it. <laughs> but the idea that we act like our parents is something that gets ingrained in us from a very, very young age. It's not something that automatically happens when you get married or as you get older, that you all of a sudden one morning look in the mirror and say, oh my God, I've turned into my parent. It's something that comes upon you slowly over time. And there are early moments of recognition. And sometimes those are positive associations. But usually when someone else identifies you that way, they don't mean it in the most positive light. <laughs> And certainly when we receive that comment, we don't feel it's positive. <laughs> that is by way of introduction to a moment that occurs in this morning's parsha, and one comment that takes place on it that's clearly more about what's going on in the commentary's head than what's going on in the individual over whom that comment is being made. Let me tell you what I mean. In this morning's parsha, we again meet up with the person of Jacob. He is an extraordinary, complicated individual with a very difficult upbringing. He is placed between his mother and his father in a moment that is one that will stand with him for an extremely long time Jacob is placed squarely between his mother and his father. So let me tell you the background of the story very, very quickly. Jacob, in last week's Torah portion, makes a deal with Esau in which he purchases the birthright. And then we don't hear of it again until, this, until later in the parsha, when Rebekah sees a moment in which Jacob can now receive that blessing. And she tells Jacob, look, make believe you're your brother. Go about this moment of deception with me and you will prosper. And you and I will be the, be the beneficiaries of that blessing. And I imagine for just a moment, Jacob pauses and he thinks to himself, this isn't how it's supposed to unfold. I bought it. Right? It's rightfully mine. There doesn't have to be deception in order to receive it. This should be something on the up and up. But Rebecca says to him, here, make believe you're Esau and go get the birthright. And there is a pause there where Isaac says to Jacob, you sound like Jacob, but you are in fact feeling like Esau. That is, your arm feels like what Esau would feel like, but your voice is the voice of Jacob. And Jacob pauses for just a moment, and he says, Anochi, it's me. And that's where the pause takes place. He says, Esav, achi. He actually seems to suggest in the text that he has a moment where he pauses about the deception. He thinks about it twice. And then he goes forward with this moment of trickery. And then we arrive at this morning's parsha. And he has this famous dream of a ladder in which angels go up and down. And Breshit Rabbah, one of the great Midrashic commentaries, says 
Mean de Amar Olim Viardim Biakov Maalin O Bo Moridim Bo Ufazim Bo Kufsim Bo Sontim Bo. The Midrash says Jacob's vision of the angels going up and down are angels that give him props, who say, You did a good thing. And then there are angels who tried to bring him down and say, you know what? You were involved in deception. There are moments in our lives where we achieve great things and there are moments in our lives where we stoop very low. And these angels, both from two different perspectives, say to Jacob, you did good? No, you did bad. And the dream is a dream of complexity, of emotion with regards to a single event. Is it possible that the same event can be both good and bad? Is it possible that you could see yourself both as the victor in one moment and the victim in the same moment? Says the Midrash about Jacob, the dream of angels going up and down is a moment in which he feels good and bad at the same time. See, that's the way emotions work. That's the way we think about ourselves. We can feel very good about ourselves and bad about ourselves at the same time. It's not so simple. Our emotions don't get put in boxes so easily as to say today I feel good and tomorrow I might feel bad or tomorrow I feel bad and the next day I'll feel good again. More than anyone in the Torah, says Aviva Zornberg, he lives, that is Jacob lives in a larger register of turbulence, of error and revelation. It's an amazing comment that Aviva Zornberg makes. He lives in a life of turbulence. And now I share with you one quick moment in this morning's parsha. Vatera Rachel et ki lo yalda Yaakov. Rachel saw that she was unable to give Jacob a child. Vatikane Rachel be'achota, and she becomes upset with her sister. Vatomer el Yaakov, hava li bani ve'ein, ve'im ein meita anochi. Jacob, give me children or I'm going to die. It's an amazing moment. The pathos of Rachel pleading with her husband to do something for her. In last week's parsha, when Isaac and Rebecca are unable to have a child, Isaac, without prompting, prays on her behalf. Rachel here, the loved wife, becomes upset because she can't get pregnant, and she turns to Jacob and he, she says, do something for me. Maybe you could pray for me. And Jacob's response is, Vayichar af Yaakov birachel. And he got angry at her. It seems like a disconnect. It seems disjointed. He sees his beloved wife in pain. So much psychological turmoil that she wants to die. And his response is, what are you so upset about? What are you bothering me with this for? It has nothing to do with me. Can't you see? I fathered so many other children. It's not about me, it's about you. And we step back for a moment and we say, which cruelty is Jacob inflicting on his beloved Rachel? What cruelty is he exhibiting towards a woman in pain, his beloved wife? And Rashi says, this is what he really thought. At omeret she'asa ke'aba? Ani eni ke'aba. Are you saying that I'm not as good as my father? It's not at all what Rachel was saying. There isn't a single moment in which she says, why can't you do for me what Isaac did for your mother? There isn't a single instance in which you can even imply that she's suggesting that he's not as good as his father. But guess what Rashi says? That's all Jacob hears. The only thing that Jacob hears his entire life is, you're no Isaac. 
I knew Isaac and you're no Isaac. All he hears his entire life as Isaac had heard his entire life is that you're no match for your father. You're not half the man he was. And so his response is disproportionate. He lashes out because of the turmoil, because of the noise in his own head. Vayikat Yaakov Mishnato. So the Zohar says, the solution is very simple. When Abraham awakes from his dream, he should have felt like he had learned something, that he was following a path that God had laid out for him. He should have understood that that was a moment of revelation about himself, and that is that he will amount to something and that he should be able to turn off the noise in his head. He should be able to say, I am my own person, Anochi, I know who I am. But he doesn't. And he lashes out, and he hurts deeply the wife he loved most. And so that's the lesson that's so simple for us today to learn, but so difficult to apply in our lives. Until we're able to turn off the noise in our head, until we can find our own identity and own it and feel like we are who we are, then that static will continue to compel us to act in ways that are not ourselves. We'll lash out and we will scar those we love most because of our own internal insecurities. When Rachel asks Jacob for help, his response should have been, I love you. I see the pain you're in. I'm here for you. Let's walk this journey together. But instead he lashes out because he has no idea who he is. And he has no idea what his capacity is. This morning's parsha lays out very simply for us that until we turn off the noise in our head, until we turn down the volume of the static, we will forever hurt those who are closest to us. When we find our true self, we acknowledge our own voice. When we embrace who we are, then we'll be more capable of embracing those around us. Shabbat shalom. Continue with Musaf, page 184. It's introduced by the Chatzikadish. Please rise.